Hello, hello everyone. Come on in, come on in. I am Carolise and I'm your business analyst coach. And this is the place where you can come to get information about business analysis, about product ownership, about product management, project management. Just if you want to find out about the career, this is where you'll find videos about that. Or if you're a new graduate or just somebody who's curious to know how it is in the working world or in the business world, this could be a great place for you as well. So go check out my other videos. I have a bunch of videos here on YouTube that you can check out and it can be very helpful for you. And also, if you like what you see, please subscribe, please like the video, please leave a comment, and that will be great for me to be encouraged to keep giving out this information, okay? So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm, I'm very happy that you're watching this video. And today we're talking about a very important thing, and that is what are the documents that a business analyst produces? Like you're working, 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 What is your deliverable what do you produce what's the artifact that's the result of all of your work that is what we're going to be talking about today but before we get into that i want to say that i do have some free courses on business analysis that's up on my website so go to carlys.com go to free courses and you can see different types of courses on different topics and you can just go there and watch the courses and that way it's structured for you, it's organized for you, and you don't have to be jumping around in YouTube trying to figure out which video to watch next. You know, just wanna share that with you so that if you need more information, that's the place that you should go to get it. All right, also before I jump into the topic of today, I wanna let you hear from our sponsors, so let's go check that out and come right back. I wanted to share with you a tool I've been using that's really helped my productivity, and that is this thing right here called a cube timer. So a cube timer is actually this thing, and it just has all the numbers in each of the faces. And as you're working, you can just turn it on and flip it, and flip it, and flip it. <laughs> and whatever number is on the face, that's the number that you start the counting for. And when that time is up, it alarm, so you know you need to stop what you're doing and move on to the next task. This has been immensely valuable for you timing yourself and making sure you get things done in a timely manner. And I'm gonna leave the link to this in the description below. It's actually available on Amazon. I'll leave the link below. And if you click on that link and make this purchase, that will be supporting and helping what we're doing here on YouTube. So go check it out and get this wonderful little tool, y'all, to help you manage your time and be more productive. So we're talking about, you know, what are the documents that a business analyst produces? What's a business analyst deliverable? Uh, what's the artifacts that they create? And, you know, it's very important to know this if you're going to be working in this space, right? What are you expected to do? And so there are a number of documents that we produce, and some of them are formal, some are informal. I mean, some are structured, some are not. Some you can come up with by yourself. Some you have to follow a very strict template. So, again, every company is doing their own thing. But generally, um, as a business analyst, there's a few documents that you must, 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 must know how to write and the number one document would be your business requirements document right so i do have a video of how to write your business requirements document and you can go check that out but basically this is going to be a document that lists out all of the requirements that you need for the feature function or project that you're working on sometimes we call it uh, a functional requirements document. Sometimes it could even be the system requirements, specifications, SRS document. They all have kind of slight little differences, but it's generally that document that is the authority, the authoritative document as to what should be built in a system or what the process is going to be like and so on. So this is the main deliverable that you have as a business analyst. The business requirements document or the FRD functional requirements document or SRS systems requirements specifications are usually documents that are produced in a waterfall environment. So if you're working under waterfall where you're doing all of the requirements up front and you write all the documentation up front for every single thing to do with this feature, then you create this huge <laughs> or this big document that is called the BRD, FRD, or SRS, and that would be the authority for what they need to go off and build um, 
for software projects or if it's a process or if it's just a you know a feature or something like that you would um write this document and it would be used as reference point for the other teams that need to know about what to build right so that's normally done in a waterfall environment and so that's the main deliverable if you're working in waterfall now for the agile people in the room right what is the deliverable for you as an agile business analyst well mainly it's going to be the user stories right so the user stories is your main deliverable uh when you're working in agile and this is you know complete with your acceptance criteria i do have a video on how to write user stories and that goes through what makes a user story good you know how to put one together normally people write user stories in a tool called jira but you can write user stories in word or in excel or any any other tool but in the industry jira is the authority this is the the most commonly used tool for writing user stories and managing the whole entire agile process i do also have a video on how to write the acceptance criteria and so you can go and check those videos out if you need some help as to how to produce this deliverable of the user story the other deliverable that you will produce or deliver if you're a business analyst will be your mockups and your wireframes so this one is kind of true in some cases and not true in some cases because some companies hire a ux designer who works hand in hand with the product owner or the business analyst or the product manager to actually come up with the wireframes the mockups of what the software needs to look like but in some cases they don't have a, a ux designer and so the business analyst creates these wireframes for talking points and has a discussion around them you know change them edit them based on what the feedback is and then that produces um you know better mockups for the next session and if iteratively doing this you eventually come up with the best design the business analyst is the one that's actually doing the mockups and the wireframes to go with their requirements and user stories now don't take this as being oh my god i gotta go learn how to how to be a designer i gotta go learn photoshop i gotta go learn sketch I gotta go learn zeppelin and all these things no you don't need to know all of those things um normally just doing basic wireframing is enough. You could do balsamic. I have a, uh, a video on the tools that you can use. Um, so you can go check that out as well. It includes a tool called balsamic. You could use paint. You could use Word, PowerPoint. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to have a pixel perfect uh, mockup. You know, there's other tools out there as well that will be helpful for creating these, these mockups that business analysts produce to go along with their requirements. The other thing that business analysts produce would be like a scope document. So these can have different names. Some people call it project scope, you know, feature scope, you know, um, you know, all different names that they name it. But it's really just like a document that highlights what will be done and what will not be done. Right, among other things but the main purpose of it is to delimit what you're going to actually produce for this time period or for this feature or for this function or for this uh project so that there is clear understanding as to what you're going to be delivering when it is done right so there's another document called a scope document that the business analyst sometimes writes and produces other documents that we produce include things like walkthrough presentations so sometimes you need to communicate the ideas that you came up with with a different team and so you produce these presentations that kind of walk through the process explain how it will work you know show the as is state and the to be state sometimes if it's a software project then you walk through the screenshots and you explain how it will flow so you have your primary flow and your secondary flow and you walk through all of that with maybe your dev team maybe with your customer support team maybe with other teams that will be interested in this so you create this thing as this presentation tip typically although it doesn't have to be um, it could be just our document or something else but you create this presentation and then you you have that as reference for how you have envisioned this new process. Another important thing that we don't want to ever lose sight of is your use cases. So business analysts actually do write documentation on use cases. And there is a little confusion about the use case right now because one is you have the UML use cases. So UML has this structure 
for writing use case descriptions and how to do use case diagrams. And so you have these ovals, you have these little stick people, and then you show how this use case matched to this person and blah, blah, blah. And that's great if you want to map it out from an actor versus use case perspective. And that's great for documenting um, your future feature or future system. And it's very system related though. You know, it's very, this is how the system is going to work or these are how, how all the actors interact with some kind of feature. And that's great for the UML perspective. But when you get into the real world, you start to realize that when they say use case, they mean something different, right? They don't always mean the UML version of a use case. So use case could also be referring to how are people using this feature or function, or how are they uh, walking through this process currently? So the use case tends to be from two perspectives, what it is today and how we intend for people to use it in the future. So the use case is very tricky. You gotta be careful about this because you might hear use case and you go off thinking they want a UML diagram, but sometimes they don't. They just want you to explain what they're trying to do currently the challenges they're having what they're doing now and how they're you know what what is impeding them and it could also be this is how we're going to solve the problem and this is how they're going to use the solution right so the use case of how we're going to use this new solution so you got to be careful sometimes if you need to do the latter one it just needs to be a document that's well laid out and explains all the different things if they meant the uml version then it needs to be the UML description and the diagram that goes with it, right? So just need to clarify. Most of the time, though, I'm telling you, most people don't even know about the UML <laughs> in the real world. They don't really know the UML version of a use case. They're thinking use case, they're thinking how someone uses the feature function or project or, or process. They're, and they want you to document that so it can be shared with other people. So just be careful about that when you think about use cases. The other thing that a business analyst produces often is called a user acceptance test case. So your UAT is user acceptance test cases, and this is what you will use to make sure that the user will accept the feature or function that you've just created. So what it is, it's supposed to be written from the perspective of the user, and it's written to test if the user will find this functionality you know, usable or friendly or useful. And so you need to know how to write those kinds of test cases. It's different from your acceptance criteria. It's not the same. Sometimes people think that the acceptance criteria in Agile will be used directly for the UAT. And it's not true because the acceptance criteria is written for developers. And it's written specifically so they can understand what to go and build. But the UAT is written for the user. And they need to understand, need to break down terms, need to group things, they need to make it user friendly so they can understand what you intend for them to do. And you're also trying to gauge if what you've built from a technology perspective is it's usable, if it has good user experience. And so you don't want to tell them every single step. You want to know if they can figure it out on their own because you're not going to be sitting beside them in the real world to tell them exactly what to do. So the system needs to be user friendly, it needs to have good UX design. And so you write your UAT to cover some of those things, right? To give them scenarios that they can then go try and solve with your tool and see how they struggle with it and where you need to improve. Or if it's really easy for them to fly through, then you're like, wow, yeah, we got this. So things like that is what you try to get when you do your UAT testing. So just to recap, the documents that a business analyst produces, the business requirements document or the BRD or the FRD or the systems requirements specifications, SRS. So that's the main document in a waterfall environment. If you're into a agile environment, you're gonna be producing user stories. That's the main document in a user story. And it's not really a document because we think of document like some big file, you know? The, the user stories are gonna be small stories that are gonna be a part of whatever tool you're using, normally Jira and they include their acceptance criteria. So that's the second thing that you produce. Um, you're also producing mockups and wireframes, um, and it doesn't have to be pixel perfect, doesn't have to be exact, it just needs to represent what you're trying to build. Scope document, so you create a scope document to delimit what you will build and what you won't, or what the process will have and what you won't have, so you can make sure you set the right expectations. Walkthrough presentations. So you're doing your walkthrough presentations because 
um, you want to document the process and how it's going to go. And normally you're doing this before you're finished. So you're doing it to kind of evaluate and to, to let, you know, get feedback from the people who can make decisions. So you're, that's your walkthrough document. You're doing a UAT test. So the UAT test is going to be helpful to make sure the user can understand what you've done, to make sure it's user friendly enough for them. So you're doing a UAT test and you're going to write UAT test cases for that. And you're also going to be writing, um, use case use cases so you're going to be writing use cases and it depends on your environment whether it's going to be a use case such as a uml kind of use case or just a use case being a document that explains how something is going to be used or is being used okay so those are the eight documents that i think every business analyst need to know how to write okay this is imperative this is important this is how you define yourself as a business analyst right so this is going to be very very vital for you to know and again go check out my videos on how to do this and uh, i hope to see you guys next time please check out my website carlis.com please check out the sponsors of this video like and subscribe to the video y'all like and subscribe and show me some support okay i'm giving you some free information you're going to give me some support by subscribing. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next video where we talk about more interesting and important and career advancing topics to do with business analysis, technology, product management, and all of that stuff. Okay. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.